Darren, as an extension of our previous conversation, I think it's becoming increasingly obvious to everyone that our politicians, our political leaders, very often resemble little more than puppets on strings. This raises the question of who holds the ultimate authority? Who is the puppet master? Because a lot of the requests that the people put out to the politicians by way of asking the politicians to enact our will are being ignored. Can you give us an idea of who you think might be really running the show, so to speak? Well, at the moment, one would easily say it's got to do with the uh, United Nations. The United Nations, as far reaching as the Vatican, the Crown, but ultimately it's the banks. Uh, the banks appear to be in control of a lot of things because all you have to do is go and look at the laws to see that the banks hold a balance of power and some sort of a control. Um, you know, just recently, uh, when I was actually uh, in Darwin, I had a phone call from a friend in Victoria and uh, he was in the Supreme Court and they just brought some information to the Supreme Court in respect of all of the courts in Victoria are actually owned by Goldman Sachs. And that's Court Services Victoria, uh, the Supreme Court, the County Court, the Magistrates Court, they're all owned by Goldman Sachs which owns the big four banks in part. So when you go to the courts in Victoria, for example, and you've got a matter in regards to your mortgage or some sort of property, and the bank's involved, the court has a conflict of interest. Now, this is the problem in most societies because it appears that the banks have this overreaching control in most countries over most judiciaries and that's where the problem lies and it, it, it reaches into government as well so when you've got a royal commission into banking and no one goes to jail well there's the evidence that the banks are in control where else can an entity be proven to steal billions of dollars from the Australian people and no one pays. They give them some token fine, but no one goes to jail. And this is the problem in this country, as well as many other countries. The banks are controlling everything, it appears. So, as an extension of that, uh, that concept, can you tell us a bit more about Goldman Sachs, who they are? It, the majority of people have heard the company name Goldman Sachs, but who exactly are they? It's, I'm assuming you're saying this is a multinational, very wealthy financial institution. 100%. Uh, the, the banks themselves have many shareholders, and many of these shareholders, I won't get into the specific names, but they are the elite controlling families of the world. Um, they control everything and it goes right through to, uh, goes right through from the highest uh, parts of parliament right down to the local level in local government. Everything is controlled by the banks. Unfortunately, even when you take this information to the courts, as my friend did last month, or sorry, about a few months back, uh, what happens is because there's a conflict of interest and one would always protect their uh, employer, uh, this matter has been not allowed to go through and continue in the courts. So there is no remedy in the courts, especially if you're going up against the banks. So the banks, are, whether it be Goldman Sachs in particular or banks in general, they are having a direct influence on the justice system, the outcome of court cases. 100%. My, my understanding is that when you have a land matter and you take this to a court, the court 
cannot adjudicate correctly because once again they do have a conflict of interest going on because they are actually employed by the banks but the banks are seeming to get away with uh, not abiding by contracts overriding contracts uh, not having the law imposed upon them they are basically stealing uh, multiple properties and this happened uh, you know after the the great financial reset back in 2008 in America right across America thousands upon thousands of homes were repossessed and most of them actually stolen is this referring to the so-called subprime lending fiasco yes exactly and the same thing occurred on a smaller scale in australia and uh, a lot of the uh, the victims of that were farmers um, this has been documented on many shows even 60 minutes uh, the amount of farms that were stolen and the underhanded um, tactics that we used to actually steal the farms uh, lawyers were were forging execution warrants to uh, uh, get farmers off their property. Farmers were being set up and, uh, and, and, and arrested and taken away and then their properties taken while they were in custody. Um, these things have been happening for a long time but not to this level. So if you have a property out there uh, folks be careful because there's a lot of people out there that are playing with fire in respect of uh, taking on the banks in the courts. It's, uh, it's a difficult game to play and the, uh, the dice is loaded so to speak.